to fool us, where magicians can win an all-expenses-paid trip to perform in Vegas if they can fool Penn and Teller with their best trick. It's time now to meet our next performer. John Allen. My name's John Allen. I'm a professional magician and creator of magical effects. Uh, the style of magic I do is uh, close-up magic mainly. I always try to do magic with everyday objects and things that people can relate to. The trick I'm going to be doing tonight is very dangerous. I don't think anyone's died yet from doing it, but it has caused a lot of injuries and, and hopefully uh, I won't be added to that list. Danger, danger. I'd say this trick works 99 times out of 100. To date, I've probably done it 98 times. Tonight, it's probably going to be 50-50. If I look nervous, it's because I really, really get it. The sort of reactions I get when I perform this, I've had people screaming, people just not wanting to look, and some people wondering if I'm actually a sane human being. That, I never let on. The trick you are about to see is definitely risky. If it goes well, if it works, our next performer could be going to Vegas. If it goes badly, he will be going to Casualty and then almost straight on to YouTube. Will you please welcome <laughs> Mr. John Allen. Thank you very much. Thank you. Are we in control of our own fate? Clearly for me tonight, the answer to that question is no. But are any of us in control of our own fate? Because every single day, we rely on other people for our own safety. Whether it's other drivers on the road, the chef who cooks our food in the restaurant, or even the person who secured the studio lights to the ceiling above your heads. <laughs> so let me explain what I have here. Inside the first three bags, I have a block of wood. Now, the reason for the block of wood will become apparent in a few moments. In the fourth bag, there is another block of wood, but as you can see, I've drilled a hole through it. The reason for that is this. A solid six-inch stainless steel spike. Technically, it's a nail, uh, but I do like alliteration. <laughs> now, I need someone to verify that this is, in fact, sharp. So, uh, the lady just on the end there, your name is? Sophia. Sophia, can you come up and join me, please? Give her a round of applause. I'd like to thank you for coming to help. Thank you. Sophia. Could you just slam your... Actually, don't slam your hand down. That would be quite silly. <laughs> could you just tap the palm of your hand just on there very gently? Is that, is that sharp? Yeah. yeah. Good. Now, the nail goes into the bag. Yeah? Happy? Yeah. Good. Now, I need to mix up the bags so that nobody knows where the nail is. But so that you don't know, I have this screen. Now, Sophia, could you just turn around so that you can't see either? That's fine. Now, I'm just going to mix up the bags so that none of you know where the nail is. But I know what you're thinking. I don't expect that to fool you. Well, that's why I'm going to have Sophia mix up the bags as well. Sophia, can you just turn around? And can you just mix up the bags for me just a few times and just leave them in a straight line? And now you can see why I have the extra blocks. Otherwise, it's quite easy to see which are the empty bags. Have you done that? Yeah. Fantastic. Great. Let's take this away. So, tonight I'm going to put my safety into the hands of somebody else. You. <laughs> it's time to go serious because there are videos online of people doing this type of effect and getting it wrong and badly injuring themselves. And because of that, I have to say a couple of things. First of all, check out the videos because some of them are quite funny. But also, <laughs> please do not try this at home. And for legal reasons, I have to say in front of everybody here, if this goes wrong and I end up getting injured, the fault lies entirely with Sophia. <laughs> Sophia. I'm going to pass my hand over each bag. When you get a sense or a feeling that my hand is over a safe bag, that's one, well, without the nail in, I'd like you just to say, stop. Stop. This one here. You sure? Mm -hmm. 
Okay. Suddenly, this seems like a really stupid thing to do. <laughs> Literally one down. All right. Two more to go. Sophia, the same thing. When you think my hand is over a safe bag, just say stop. Stop. In this one? Okay. Maybe there are times when you are in control of your own fate, and maybe tonight is just such a moment for you, Sophia. Could you take maybe two steps to your right? Are you left or right-handed? Right. That's a shame. Okay. <laughs> okay. You're going with your instincts. Mm -hmm. All right, just let, your, just let your arm go loose, okay? We'll do this on the count of, just let it go loose. Expand to the muscles, just in case. On the count of, one! Okay. Uh, Sophia, I promise that I will do this one. Okay. All right. For the final time, when you think my hand is over the safe bag, you get that gut feeling, just say stop. Stop. That's it? Mm. Okay. <laughs> Why do I do this? Sorry. <laughs> Tremendous. Let's Thank go around the front here. That was uh, fabulous. It was nerve wracking and it was funny at times as well. And uh, poor Sophia almost fainted, I think, at one stage. <laughs> so and you're right, I have seen these clips on YouTube. There are uh, incidents of people actually doing this and actually getting impaled. Yep. I mean, for real, I've seen these things. I don't know if they do it the same way as you. I don't know why that happened, how that happened, but has it ever gone wrong or nearly wrong for you? It hasn't gone wrong yet, but right. so there's always that inherent risk of something going wrong. Yeah, yeah. And when you do it, when you had Sophia's hand and you pushed her down there, is there a moment where you think, A, I might have got this wrong, and B, thank God it isn't my hand? Well, I prefer just to use someone's hand for all of it. Uh, that's the easiest way out of it. Uh, but no, I, I, do, I do worry for the person, and thank you for, for doing something well, you didn't know you were going to do, so I appreciate that. Um, and can I just ask, have you performed in Vegas before? Have you visited Vegas before? Have you done shows over there? I'd love to go to Vegas. <laughs> you haven't done it yet. Okay, well, Penatella's still talking. I think, uh, do you think I've given them long enough, ladies and gentlemen? Yes. I think I have. Because what they have to do, of course, is get it right. They can't just give me three possibilities. They can't give me two possibilities. I'm going to make them settle on one, and that's what I'm going to do right now. Pen! Tell her! Hello? How can you just ignore me? Okay, Mr. Pen? First of all, I want to address a moral issue. The, what you said about uh, the videos on YouTube uh, is absolutely true. There are people that have done tricks similar to this who have been injured doing it. And I want to just state very strongly that magicians that do things that are truly dangerous uh, are immoral. That's wrong to do. And I'm hoping that the producers would never allow this on this show. And I believe they would not. That having been said, we don't think there's any chance involved in this whatsoever. Jello was expecting through the whole trick that you had nails in all four bags and you were going to pull it up from the bottom and hook it up from that. You didn't do that. I believe, and I could be wrong, that I saw after you did the kind of faux praying gesture uh, on the last bag and came down, I believe your right hand went out of sight. And I believe you copped the prop to load it into the final bag. Is that right or is that wrong? Because if that's right, you didn't fool them. Yep. If that's wrong, you're going to Vegas. Much as I'd love to go to Vegas, that's close enough for me that you got it. Whoa! Well, thank wow. you. <laughs>